Did I connect the microphone? No, I didn't. Okay, there we go. So this may be a short one. This may be a long one. Um, there are some thoughts that I think are important to share because I think that this probably won't apply to a bunch of guys who are already on TRT, but I think the concept is important. But I think there's also a bunch of new guys in the group who haven't started TRT yet. And I think that's cool. So this is for everyone who would like some more knowledge on this concept as a whole. I think, and firstly, this, as always, this is not medical advice. Secondly, do not reference this video with your psychiatrist or your GP. This is educational advice. This is my perspective. This is a hypothesis, blah, 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 blah. I think my hypothesis is that if someone is dealing with quote unquote, major depressive disorder, which is very commonly overdiagnosed. But let's say hypothetically they are. I think that testosterone replacement therapy is a better frontline intervention than psychiatric medications. And I'll explain why. The vast majority, if not all men who I have met who were severely depressed were physically emasculated. You could just see it looking at them. Now, I'm not saying that every every non-masculine guy is depressed or that every hyper-masculine guy is not depressed. But there's a pretty fucking strong correlation from what I've seen. That's pretty obvious. I think that when we look at a person who is in a depressive spell, a truly depressive spell, and when I say depressive spell... I mean, someone who is truly depressed and living a life which is truly depressing. I think that that can be overcome with action. I really do. I think that the amount of action to get out of a truly depressive episode in life is orders of magnitude greater than most people would realize that it is, but I think that it is possible. But just because something is possible doesn't mean that it is necessarily going to happen. And I think that there needs to be an equal amount of accountability for people getting to a point in their life where their life is depressing and not actually trying hard enough to get out of it. I think that's a huge part that a lot of depressed people really need to understand is that there is more work that needs to be done that they are often willing to do. And that's just the way it is. And a lot of the time it's because they need to pay back the months or the years that they have spent being off track. And that's just how it is. But I think there also needs to be compassion for people in this situation to understand that just because something can be done doesn't mean that it will be done. And it also doesn't mean that someone in the position saying that it can be done could do it without testosterone because I use testosterone to put my life back together. So I'm biased. But if I'm in a situation objectively and I'm speaking with a client who is severely depressed, whose life is off track, who is at the point where they need an intervention. And I think that it's great that get, men can get to a point where they can ask for help. I think that if we look at the options available that we currently have in medicine, I think testosterone replacement therapy is a better option than SSRIs. It's a better option than stimulants like dexamphetamine. It's a far better option than something like Wellbutrin or Bupropion. All of the options former are better options than antipsychotics. And I think if we looked at niche pharmaceutical options for major depressive disorder, like dopamine agonists, I think that testosterone is a safer, better, and overall healthier option than all of the above. We know that the monamine hypothesis of depression is bunk. We know that people who are depressed are not deficient in serotonin. And the fact that the majority of psychiatrists and the Western medical system at large still treats depression via this hypothesis is absolutely fucking retarded. And it also shows that science and pharmacy don't have a lot in common. And I think that's a pretty crude wake up call for a lot of people to understand that the medical industry is written by the, well, the medical doctrines are written by the pharmaceutical industry. 
and the pharmaceutical industry lobbies the government to be able to have the power to dictate how medicine works. Medicine is less about healing people in the West as it is about selling pharmaceuticals. And I genuinely don't think it is in anyone's best interest for fighting age men to be happy, healthy, and capable. So there's that. I think that depression is a very difficult thing for a lot of people to deal with because it's a holistic problem. And a lot of the time it comes from the consequences of a string of actions of either failure or failure to act and the resulting self-esteem issues and life getting on off track as a result. So if someone's in a situation where they need to fix something and I'm sitting here being biased, firstly, we know that jacking serotonin through the roof doesn't fix depression and it causes side effects, which make depression worse. Tricking the brain into thinking that you're doing better than you are via increasing serotonin doesn't actually lead to constructive behaviors that resolve the depressive environment. If anything, they make people more comfortable with the depressive environment that they are already in but their brain stops giving them the correct feedback based on the stimulus they're being presented with. This makes people feel fucking weird, but they also don't behave properly. I am sick of seeing obese women parading around in scrunch bum leggings and crop tops because they're so fucking pumped full of antidepressants to not feel anxious and horrific when they look in the mirror at how grotesque they are. You see that all the time in Australia. It's disgusting. And it's not just disgusting from a physical standpoint, it's disgusting because these people are lying to themselves about what is going to kill them 20, 30, 40 years earlier than when they should go. It leads to people becoming delusional, but also numb to the realities of the world. And the reality of the world is that life is hard. And I think the best remedy to deal with that is to get harder than life. That is easier said than done, and none of these interventions are panaceas for depression. There is no pill, there is no supplement, there is no magical intervention that you can make that is going to make you happy all the time, or that is going to fix your life unless you win the lottery and have good financial coaching to put your shit together, which is very, very unlikely. So... If someone's at the point being like, well, what's the best tool that we have in the toolbox to make an intervention with? I think it's TRT. Unless that person naturally has robust testosterone levels, which would be a needle in the haystack, it would be very rare. So my proposition as a hypothesis is that if someone has average testosterone levels, let's say a free testosterone in the 400s, you know, not hypergonadal, but low normal, I think that they stand more benefit to doubling their testosterone levels from average to exceptional than they do from jacking their serotonin or dopamine to 10 to 100 times the natural concentration of their brain. This makes more sense to me. And when you look at the side effects of TRT in terms of the behavioral side effects or the patterns that come from that, a stronger predisposition towards exercise, more resilience, more bravery, less stress, better physical metabolism, less inflammation, cognitive protecting, cardio protective, prostate protective, pro-sexual function. It shits all over the pharmaceutical interventions by a long shot. It just doesn't make anywhere near the amount of money. Now, people will say, oh, well, you don't want to do that because TRT means that you're going to be on it for life. Have you tried coming off an SSRI after five or 10 years? I'd rather come off TRT after five or 10 years than an SSRI. Do a post-cycle therapy for three or four months or two months. You're right back to where you would be. I'm working with a lot of guys coming off SSRIs after five or 10 years, and they were not warned that coming off that is virtually impossible at that stage. So I think there's less of a commitment going on TRT. I think there are more fringe benefits and you're also using something that's fucking bioidentical to the body. How, how is this any worse than using a pharmaceutical intervention? 
I think the reason why it is frowned upon or why it is scheduled or why it's not even an off-label private prescription often for op option for depression is that it goes against operant conditioning. I think it's very interesting the majority of the psychiatric drugs increase operant conditioning. It increases your ability to be trained. I think that it's interesting that testosterone is so strictly scheduled and it's one of the only molecules that's ever been studied that makes people less likely to follow instructions. What a coinky dink. Especially given that the pharmaceutical industry's primary goal for the last few years has been compliance. I think that's important to look at. So I don't think everyone with depression needs to go on testosterone. I don't think that at all. But I think that if someone's down and out and they're in a situation where they're looking to make an intervention, I think testosterone is a better option, a safer option, and a healthier option and is superior in all ways to using psychiatric drugs, both from a theoretical standpoint and also from a practical outcome standpoint. I think that the work that needs to be done to resolve depression is going to be fueled far better from testosterone than any psychiatric drug. And of course, there will be reasonable arguments to the contrary, particularly if someone is more prone to developing side effects on TRT because of diet and lifestyle problems, which come secondary or as a primary cause of the depression in the first place. But I think that with proper coaching and proper accountability and a proper relationship between a mentor and a mentee, which is also not present in, in most depressive diagnoses, this is something that can be navigated and overcome. So if I was to be counseling someone who was starting testosterone for depression, I would add the following supplements. I would add a good dose of an organic greens powder. I would add organ capsules. I would add a high dose of omega-3s. I would add glutathione. I would potentially add phospholiposerine, CBD, and melatonin. I would be hitting them from all angles to support all aspects of improving their physical and mental health with mobility work, regular cardio, so whether it's walking or cardio machines, whatever the fuck they're going to do, I don't care. Getting outside in nature, regular li listening to podcasts or audiobooks, things that actually simulate neurogenesis, things that actually make people learn more, things that inspire people. I would encourage them to spend more time with the people who actually have their best interest at heart, which often doesn't mean they're friends, often it means their family. But if your family's full of dickheads, it might mean your friends. But keep in mind that a lot of depressed people's friends are depressive assholes as well who want to drag you down with them. So might be time to cut some people loose. I would encourage them to do some form of introspective meditative work. And I would give them hope that if they actually put the work into doing what they're trying to achieve, that the, at the end of the day, it, it can get better, but it's going to take a good amount of time and a good amount of work. But there can be a relationship with someone who will guide you, who will not talk to you endlessly about your feelings and make you even more self-obsessed and selfish than you were in the first place, which is probably what got you off track, right? but someone who could actually hold you accountable, guide you, inspire you, break the steps down into something smaller and manageable and teach you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but you just can't see that light because you're too far back. I think that's it.